And one of those arguments has to do with the idea that Joseph Smith didn't practice polygamy or that he didn't have plural wives or spiritual wives or celestial wives, that he was married to Emma Smith only. So I gathered some really great friends of mine who are also really good researchers and historians, and I think we're going to try to put those arguments to rest. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and introduce our panelists. So John Hatch, why don't you say hello? What I find interesting about the, the Joseph Smith wasn't a polygamous thing, there's a conspiratorial aspect to this that I find fascinating, and that's, that's the part that interests me. So uh, there's, so if, if you're talking about like conspiracies and so certainly a lot of the contemporary evidence is pretty scant, which is, which is true. I think so when I talk about conspiracy theories, I should, I should say that I mean these kind of grand conspiracies that we hear about the JFK assassination. When it comes to Joseph Smith wasn't a polygamist, that's, that's sort of in the vein that I, that I mean when I talk about that. Um, studies show that people who don't have a lot of control or who don't feel in control are much more likely to buy into conspiracy theory. So this is an easy accusation to make in order to not address the facts. But I must point that the people who believe Joseph Smith did not practice polygamy are not the conspiracy theorists. The conspiracy theorists are those that are claiming Joseph Smith practice polygamy in secret. In other words, a conspiracy defined as an agreement made in secret by two people to do an illegal or unethical act. So, Joseph Smith denying polygamy is not a conspiracy theory. What is a conspiracy theory is the claim that Joseph Smith snuck around and then made secret agreements with multiple women and multiple men to practice polygamy, an illegal felony in secret. That is the conspiracy theory. Joseph Smith are just simply denying it. Joseph Smith always claimed he didn't practice polygamy. All church official statements said he didn't practice polygamy. Even the foundational text of the Book of Mormon decries polygamy as an abomination. Even that polygamy practiced by King David and King Solomon. It was an abomination even then in front of the Lord's eyes. So the conspiracy theorists are those that are trying to get us to believe something that Joseph Smith denied, the Mormon church officially denied in its policies, and then even excommunicated anyone they found practicing polygamy or spiritual wifery in secret. So um, that's a good a good place to start talking to John Dinger because we were talking about how evidence isn't always compelling. Uh, John Dinger, do you want to bring us into this? Yeah, so I'm hoping to talk about two main things today. The first one being, why don't we have very many contemporary sources for Joseph Smith's polygamy? And then I want to jump into, uh, not a comprehensive list, but many of the contemporary sources that we do in fact have. And so the other one that we historically are told about is that polygamy was a crime. Like uh, George D. Smith in Mormon Polygamy, he said, uh, secrecy excel itself defined and delineated this tragedy. They were engaged in illegal bigamous marriages. One of the arguments used is there are no contemporary sources, like you said. No, Joseph Smith never wrote down in his own hand, I am a polygamist. And that is used all the time to say, well, you know, how can we trust it if he said he's not a polygamist. You know, he said he, he did say he wasn't a polygamist in his own hand. And hopefully you can talk about why, why Joseph doesn't have it in his own hand. And I'll just spoiler alert with my opinion. I think the lack of evidence is just as damning as, as the evidence based on the environment that you're talking about. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The fact that we have things missing, like you said, the lack of evidence oftentimes is evidence enough. I'm going to give my own spoiler alert. The lack of evidence is never evidence. This is so absurd. And we have John Dinger, a qualified attorney, agreeing that the lack of evidence somehow miraculously becomes evidence. What is even more absurd by these polygamous apologists is that they not only rely on the lack of evidence as their proof of polygamy, is that they'll actually take evidence exonerating Joseph Smith 
and use it as evidence of polygamy. In other words, inverting the entire notion of what evidence is. And I'm particularly calling forth the Fanny Alger affair in which there was a high council trial that exonerated Joseph Smith from any sexual interaction with Fanny Alger. And then they found by evidence and witnesses under oath that Oliver Cowdery lied. And this proceeding as a church proceeding is admissible in court. The verdict found by the Mormon church at that time is admissible as showing what the church's policy was. But they take the exoneration of Joseph Smith of having any sexual interaction with any elder and use it as evidence that he did have sexual relations with any elder. But they do one better than that. They call it a marriage. Well, that certainly turns not only the verdict, finding Joseph Smith innocent of illicit sexual intercourse, but then calling it polygamy, which hadn't even been brought up by that time. Remember, the revelation occurred in 1843, a good eight years after the Fanny Alger little dirty affair, according to Oliver Cowdery, who was excommunicated and found to be a perjurer. I'm sorry, but any attorney would be guilty of malpractice who attempted to admit into evidence a verdict exonerating Joseph Smith from practicing polygamy and using it to prove that he practiced polygamy. It is simply the most absurd notion in any kind of legal field. And a judge certainly would check the mental health status of any attorney that would attempt to use a verdict exonerating Joseph Smith from polygamy and use it as evidence of Joseph Smith practicing polygamy. It is simply an Alice in Wonderland absurdity, and people buy it. Well, he doesn't write in his own hand, I, Joseph Smith, you know, hereby declare I am a polygamist. Um, we do have writings in his hands that, um, again, put in the proper context and really looking at fairly, um, he, he kind of does say I'm a polygamist. Kind of, sort of, could have. I don't know what legal universe this Mr. Dinger lives in, but it's certainly not the United States American jurisprudence. So before we start accusing Joseph Smith of conduct which he denied fervently his entire life, we should first have a discussion on what is and what isn't evidence, and what is and what isn't reliable and what is and isn't admissible in court. So in trying to prove that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, an accusation he fervently denied his entire life, it might be best to compare this to an employee accuse her employer of sexual harassment. Same thing, just different degrees, right? In a case of accusing your employer of sexual harassment, the case requires two forms of proof. One, what is the stated written policy regarding sexual harassment around the workplace? And two, what is the conduct of your employer in enforcing this policy? And this should be applied to Joseph Smith. One, what were the written stated policies of the Mormon Church? Well, we already know that. There was multiple announcements that Polygamy was illegal and not practiced in the Mormon church. And to what did they do when they found or discovered someone practicing polygamy or having ill, they call it illicit intercourse? They excommunicated him and exiled him out of the Mormon church. And this was done time after time after time, even up to the date of Joseph Smith's death. Starting with Bennett in 1842, the High Council. Navu minutes show that clearly one third of the business was dealing with excommunicating those men who were found having spiritual wifery or seducing young girls. One third, one third of the high council business and up to and including 1844, the month of Smith's death, they made another announcement saying that if anyone was found practicing or preaching polygamy, they would be excommunicated. 
Joseph Smith and the Nauvoo High Council were so serious about stamping out the spiritual wifery polygamy system in Nauvoo that they raised the penalty of fornication from $500 to $50,000. Now, do you think if Joseph Smith himself was practicing polygamy in secret, he would have raise the penalty to that astronomical amount of $50,000, believing that he might also be prosecuted under the ordinance that he just installed? I don't think so. The argument is so ridiculous in face of the persistent and consistent official statements that Mormon Church under Joseph Smith would not tolerate spiritual wifery or fornication by its members. And it consistently excommunicated and prosecuted men who were caught seducing young girls in Nauvoo. So what does the court do with all these secret backroom marriages that were supposedly occurring in Nauvoo? Well, they treat it just as it is. Innuendo, gossip, and rumor unreliable and not admissible in court. Each one of these culprits who accused Joseph Smith of practicing polygamy, the Laws, the Fosters, the Higbees, were all found committing adultery themselves and were excommunicated. The court would laugh you out of the courtroom if you tried to use these culprits as your witnesses. But unfortunately, the polygamist apologists have only these scalawags and culprits, criminals, to rely on in their campaign to try and prove Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, a practice he decried and systematically denied to the day of his death. I'm not going to rely simply on stating the obvious, which is Joseph Smith denied practicing polygamy. I'm going to lay out the case that would be laid out in trial, and you're going to see there is absolutely no reliable, admissible evidence that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, while there are mounds and mounds of evidence that Joseph Smith did everything he could to fight polygamy and to root it out of Nauvoo. It is a shameful legacy that these Utah Mormons have tried to smear Joseph Smith with their own crimes. And they went out to Utah specifically to experiment in this form of white female slavery, which failed abominably and which the United States government had to invade Utah to get them to stop. Do we have that you know of any polygamists, uh, proven polygamists at the time, writing in their journals? I no. I we mean, have we accusations, have... the same as Joseph Smith. We have hearsay and we have gossip, but we don't have any polygamist that I know of writing in their journal a declaration that they're a polygamist. Exactly. The lack of evidence that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy. But we have plenty of diaries and official church statements in which Joseph Smith denied practicing polygamy. So... Here's one out of Joseph Smith's diary kept by Willard Richards. This is a conference held on April 12, 1844, and it states, A large collection of elders assembled at the stand, addressed by Patriarch Hiram Smith on spiritual wife system. The first one we heard reporting such stories, we will report him in the times and seasons. We will report him in the times and seasons to come and give up his license. He was decided against it in every form and spoke of it at length. President Sidney Rigdon concurred he, in his remarks following Hiram. So here we have... Joseph Smith recording that Hiram Smith announced to an assembly of elders, April 1844, that they were to report to him any person engaging in the spiritual wife system, that they should report to him and they would publicize it in the times and seasons to have that 
elder who is practicing the spiritual wife system come and give up his license. That Hiram Smith was decidedly against it in every form and spoke of it at length. And then this was concurred by Sidney Rigdon. What could be more plain than that in a journal kept by Willard Richards of Joseph Smith's diary? I don't think we could get much plainer than that. Even as late as 1844, they were demanding that these spiritual wife, that the spiritual wifery system was against church policy and that anyone caught practicing it would be publicized in the times and seasons and would be required to give up his license, which is the license to, to preach the Joseph Smith form of Mormonism and that Hiram Smith was decidedly against it. So do you know what these uh, polygamous apologists are referring to when they say there's no evidence that Joseph Smith didn't practice polygamy? Well, this is evidence and it's allowable in court because it's a stated church policy. This is just one of dozens and dozens of church official statements denouncing polygamy. And so I'm going to assemble the evidence as it would be done with a court of law and show that the weight of the evidence clearly shows that the Joseph Smith Mormon Church in Nauvoo denounced polygamy. They stated it clearly in their church policies and then they excommunicated or forced elders to give up their license to preach their form of Mormonism when they were caught practicing the spiritual wifery polygamy a new and everlasting covenant, whatever code name you want to use to hide and conceal the truth, which is Joseph Smith denounced and fought against polygamy. So in part two, I'm going to list all the evidence admissible in court that shows Joseph Smith, Hiram Smith fought against polygamy. <music>